Hello everyone, this is Vicki Clifton. I'm an evangelist and I am speaking from KWPB in Newport, LP in Newport. And um, I'm here this morning with a message for you and it's called Supernatural Intervention. And so, you know, God does intervene with a lot of things. And I'm going to tell you something that came to my mind. When that war started with the Ukraine and Russia, I was one of the <laughs> probably millions that was praying for uh, this situation. And while I was praying one day, the thought came to my mind that I should continue to pray for those people, but I should begin to pray that God would make the Ukrainian people invisible. Now that sounds kind of strange maybe, but I went ahead and obeyed the Lord. And so uh, several days passed and I received a newsletter from a charity that I was in contact with. And this charity went ahead and shared a story about some of the Ukrainian people that had been inside a building. Uh, the enemy was closing in on them. There was only one way to get out, and that was to uh, walk past the um, guards or soldiers in front of them. Well, they didn't have any choice, so they decided to take off. And you know what? This is a true story. They walked right past those soldiers, and they didn't even see them. And so uh, this is the kind of God that we serve. There is nothing too hard for him. And you know what? We're hearing a lot of news, uh, really sad news of what's going on in Israel and all the horrible things happening to those people. But you know what? I just know our God is still God. And I know that some of those stories that are going to come out um, later maybe are going to be victorious uh, situations where God rescues those people out of uh, really dangerous places. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing those testimonies, aren't you? Because I look at the news and, oh boy, I just rub my head and I think, oh, this is so horrible. And it is horrible. But I know that God rescues people and he did it in the Red Sea. Why can't he do it now? And so I know I'm not the only one praying these kind of prayers. There's many other uh, people that God has laid it on their heart to pray like this. Well, we're going to pray for the supernatural intervention by God for these people. Amen. Acts 27, verse 21 through 25. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me. And not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Wow. Well, we know after reading God's word that there was a, a tumultuous storm to the degree they were having to throw things overboard. Uh, they were having to probably patch the ship as good as they could. Paul told them before they... Uh, cast out to uh, go to Crete that uh, let's not go uh, God showed me this and uh, that we're gonna have much harm uh, if if we go out in this and uh, they did it anyway how many times have I did it anyway <laughs> I have a few times and and you know what I suffered repercussions because of that and Paul um, he was in tune with the Lord 
Now, at this time, Paul was a prisoner also. And so they just uh, probably maybe because he was a prisoner, they thought, oh, what do you know? You know, but he knew by the spirit of the living God that God was telling him these things not to take off. Well, they did it anyway. And boy, were they right in the middle of the storm. And he says all of a sudden, maybe after 13, 14 days, he was fasting and praying. Good thing they had him on the ship or they wouldn't have made it at all. And he says, be of good cheer. And that's what I'm saying to you today. Be of good cheer. Believe in God and live. Hallelujah. And so it, it he said, it shall be even as it was told to me by the Lord. And God was watching over the whole situation. And uh, you know what? It turned out just the way the Lord had told Paul. Uh, he told the uh, people on board, stay on this ship. Don't get off by yourself on those uh in that place that you want to go at times just to get out and away, but just stay on the ship because if you stay on the ship, God will save you and spare your life. And so, um, anyway, it ended, uh, well, the soldier or the, uh, prisoners did not die. Uh, the captain of the ship, whoever that was, he didn't die either. No one died as a result of that. And so God wants you to stay on the ship today. Don't jump off, you know. Uh, don't jump off into the unknown, but jump off with the Lord Jesus Christ when it's time for you to get off of that ship. And so um, as, as long as they were still sailing, he, they stayed on board. And uh, that's a beautiful story, but it's, it's a story where you would think I would have hated to be on that ship rocking and rolling like that. Acts 28, 3 through 6, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer whom, though he has escaped, escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. Well, they thought that he was going to die right there. I know that there are those kind of snakes, poisonous snakes. They say you take one step and you're dead. <laughs> and no, they had one over in the Philippines like that. So um, he shook it off. He shook that venomous snake off shake off that serpent that is trying to bite you today that's trying to pull you down to try to poison you with the words of the enemy telling you all kinds of things and that you're gonna die will you stay on that ship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you stay with him and you will live. You will perform that thing that is hard. And you know, whenever we begin to begin, we begin to be promoted, you know, uh, maybe to the next level, who knows? But uh, that serpent is right there to try to stop us, hinder us, turn us back. Uh, all those things. But Paul just shook it off like nothing was even bothering him. And, you know, he had that confidence in the Lord. And do you have that confidence in the Lord today that he's going to bring you through any situation that you're in? Uh, you might say, oh, that's too hard. How could he do that? Well, he's God. He's God Almighty. He created the universe just by speaking the word. It came into existence. How come he couldn't? take care of the situation and so uh, we know that Paul uh, he had much favor on that island after that snake bit him they they no doubt were speechless and uh, come to find out there was someone that was really sick on that island and uh, uh, he laid hands on him I believe he was the chief and you know what he uh, he was raised up and so Paul had favor with those people. And, you know, that's what we want to do is treat our brothers and sisters right in the Lord, to help them when we can, encourage them with when we can. 
and um, extend the right hand of fellowship to them even as they come to our churches. Make them feel welcome. They might not be uh, the type of people that you would write, want to hang around, but they're God's people. So uh, Psalm 34, 6 through 7, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. There's times where I have had such fiery trials in my life that I was speechless. I was speechless. I was just too too afraid even to speak out any words because it, the pain was so deep within my heart. And you know, it was during those times that the Lord has been closest to me is when I was hurting like that. It didn't feel that way, but he was. And you know what? He flipped those things around. Out of nowhere came deliverance. And out of nowhere will deliverance come for you. Amen. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. There you go, Paul. That's your scripture. <laughs> and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, uh, sometimes the enemy tries to catch us off guard. Or we are around somebody for a while and we think we really know them. And then all of a sudden, boom, <laughs> the enemy steps in between and there is trouble. And so I can run to the rock, which is higher than I. If I have God, I have everything. I've got all the angels in heaven. If I needed them, according to God's word, just call it in. <laughs> but um, anyway, God is good and has delivered me out of those situations that I thought I was going to be overcome with. Luke 5, 24 through 25. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord commanded him and smote the Philistines from Geba unto thou come to Gazer. The sound on the tops of the mulberry trees. Wow. That's, uh, you wouldn't expect to, for God to move in that way, but that's the way he chose to move. And I said it before, when you think you know him, he's going to move. You will never figure God out. But you know, uh, David won the battle with the Lord's help. And uh, he told Moses to stretch forward, you know, his hand. And you know what? That's when things started happening. Uh, Pharaoh's uh, chariots, the wheels fell off. And uh, it says later on that they found the soldiers. Uh, they were dead on the seashore. And... Uh, they won that battle. It was totally impossible in man's eyes or understanding. But God told him what to do, and he did it. He, was he scared? I bet you he was when he saw those high waves. Ooh, I'd have been scared. But you know what? Even though it might look a little uncertain or scary sometimes or how can I do this I have faced that question so many times but you know what God says to step out by faith faith is what moves mountains amen Isaiah 54 16 through 17 behold I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. 
You see, Satan doesn't have control. No, not at all. But he wants you to believe he does. And uh, a lot of times we will uh, tuck tail and we'll run. You know, he, he comes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So if he can do those things to scare you and get you to turn back, he's won the battle. But God says, hang on, hang on, and to trust him. And he says, um, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. They're of me, saying, says the Lord. You're coming after me. <laughs> Watch what I'm going to do. And so uh, he also says, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. And you know what? He, he says, vengeance is mine i will repay and you know what i really <laughs> you better think twice if you want to come up against him because you're going to lose <laughs> greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world and so but god wants you to stand firm in your faith trust him with all your heart mind and soul and then you will see the salvation of the lord if God says walk across whatever, then do it, you know, or preach my word, get in front of people. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's the way I started out. It was like I looked at the congregation. I thought, feet don't fail me now. <laughs> but you know what? Got a hold of me before I ran out the door. Uh, it just took a lot of patience, a lot of time. Uh and uh, I didn't want to do it at all at first, so I ran a few years. And uh, when I ran, he was there when I got there. So uh, finally, I submitted to his authority. You see, and I'll, I'll say this, that there is an office in the fivefold ministry, and we must respect and submit to that authority unless it's way out, you know, and committing uh, uh, a moral sin or against the law, something like that. You're not supposed to submit to somebody that tells you to do something like that. So, um, but uh, there is, when we go through a battle, there is a reward also. So we need, need to remember that, that if we stick to it, you know, God's going to bring us up higher. And you know what the thing is about me when I've gone through hard battles is that I have compassion for other people and my faith begins to rise about what he's done for me to bring me out. And so that is so important. So if you keep running, keep running, keep running, you'll never really know who God is. And he's wonderful. He's beautiful. And so he says... Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And you know, these people that are killing innocent uh, people, uh, women and children, uh, they better watch out, because God's watching, and uh, he will repay and so uh, you say, well, is God like that? Oh, yeah, he is, you know, for one of his little ones. So uh, Second Chronicles 20, 14 through 15. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Beniah, the son of Behel, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord. In the midst of the congregation and he said hearken ye all judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem and thou king jehoshaphat thus saith the lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed 
by reason of this great multitude, for the battle's not yours, but the Lord's. Amen. And the first thing that he did, he put the singers out in front. So they begin to sing and they begin to worship. They begin to praise the Lord. And you know what? God moved. He loves that. You know, uh, when we get in front of him or in our secret place with him and we begin to murmur and complain and and uh, God just, uh, he's not going to hear us like he would if we begin to praise and worship him. And out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaketh. Amen. And so... Um, Yes, they won that battle. And you know what happened? Israel did not even have to do anything. Not even uh, uh, come against that enemy. God did it. And you know what happened also? The enemy fought with each other. And when they, they looked, the enemy was dead. They, they killed each other. Now that's... Uh, that's a God that is awesome, I'd say. And then he said in Genesis 19, 15 through 16, And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him forth and set him without the city. Those were angels. <laughs> can can uh, God do that today in Israel? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. It's called supernatural intervention. And so... Uh, the angel spoke to them, gave them instructions. They all listened to him. and But he told them not to look back. Well, there's always one in the crowd that's going to do something different. His wife turned around and looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Wow, <laughs> that would really be something to see. But uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was going to rain uh, fire and brimstone. The people were going to be killed there. The angels um, took uh, Lot and his family, and they were rescued. And just like they're going to rescue you also. If you're doing what is right and obeying the Lord, there will be deliverance that will come. Well, this is... Uh, been an interesting study for myself as well um my faith always increases he said hearing comes by the word of god and uh, so uh faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god so as i read these scriptures i take them in then god's doing a work in my life and you know what um he constantly is, and I make my mistakes just like the rest of you, but you know what? I get up again, and I keep trying. So I'm going to turn this over to my husband today, and thanks so much for listening. If you uh, would like, uh, you enjoyed this program, press the like button. Thank you. Well, thank you for listening to Words of Praise. You can listen to Vicki's broadcast on Thursdays at 12 o'clock noon, or you can find her broadcast on YouTube. Thanks again for listening. Take care. God bless. And seek God on a constant basis and pray to Him daily, every day, every night, every morning, and every evening. Thank you, and God bless. So cool.